Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. I'm Pastor Rufus, and here next to me is Sister Joanna. And Sister Joanna, Sister Joanna will be blessing our hearts by a reading from her devotional. And uh, but before we go to her, let's go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, the Sabbath day, Lord, and we just pray you that you would. Be with us, Lord, and we just thank you for the privilege of delivering this message to those, your people, the listener here, and we pray that you'll just put your spirit up on their ears and cause them to hear the very words that you have for them, Lord, and, and put your spirit up on our mouths and help Joanna and I give uh, the very words that you, you desire us to, to put out. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We pray that you'll just be with us this day and throughout this wet day here in uh, Northern California and just be with all of those who are with us, Lord. And, and we thank you, Lord. And we give you all the honor, all the praises, and all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath to all. Um, as you can see from the title, um, we are going to be talking about um, the power that Jesus had to to feed people with very little, thousands of people, and so many of the miracles that he performed. And my reading this morning um, just seemed to go right along with that. And it's really something for all of us to take in. So um, this is Jesus. This is. This part is Jesus speaking in the first person. I am able to do far beyond all that you ask or imagine. Come to me with positive expectations, knowing that there is no limit to what I can accomplish. Ask my spirit to control your mind so that you can think great thoughts of me. Do not be discouraged by the fact that many of your prayers are yet unanswered. Time is a trainer, teaching you to wait upon me, to trust me in the dark. The more extreme your circumstances, the more likely you are to see my power and glory at work in this situation. Instead of letting difficulties draw you into worrying, try to view them as setting the scene for my glorious intervention. Keep your eyes and your mind wide open to all that I am doing in your life. Ephesians 3, 20, 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever Amen. Romans 8, 6, the mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. Isaiah 40, 30 and 31, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And Revelation 5, 13. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, singing to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joanna. And now for our good news message today. And we'll begin with the introduction. In our previous message, we reviewed several subjects from the book of Mark, including teaching in Nazareth, the 12 sent out, John's faith recalled, 5,000 fed, and Jesus walks on water. Today we will discuss 4,000 fed, Peter's confession of Christ, the transfiguration, 
and several other gospel subjects and teachings by our Lord and Savior. And we'll begin with 4,000 fed. Sister Joanna, we'll read. Mark chapter 8, verses 1 to 26. In those days when there was again a large crowd and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples and said to them, I feel compassion for people, for the people, because they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come from a great distance. And his disciples answered him, where will anyone be able to find enough bread here in this desolate place to satisfy these people? I want to make a comment. Now, we already saw, these, these disciples already saw 5,000 fed in earlier chapters of Mark. It's like they don't remember mm -hmm. the power of God in Christ. Um, it, it just, it's so... I could see why Jesus could get a little discouraged, you know. Anyway, mm -hmm. so they're saying, where are we going to find bread here in this desolate place to satisfy these people? Mm -hmm. And he was asking them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven. And he directed the people to sit down on the ground and taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks and broke them and started giving them to his disciples to serve to them and they served them to the people. They also had a few small fish, and after he had blessed them, he ordered these to be served as well. And they ate and were satisfied, and they picked up seven large baskets full of what was left over of the broken pieces. About 4,000 were there, and he sent them away, and immediately he entered the boat with his disciples and came to the district of Dalmanatha. The Pharisees came out and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. Sighing deeply in his spirit, he said, Why does this generation seek for a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Leaving them, he again embarked and went away to the other side, and they had forgotten to take bread and did not have more than one loaf in the boat with them. And he was giving orders to them, saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began to discuss with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you discuss the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet see or understand? Do you have a hardened heart? Having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? <laughs> and do you not remember? <laughs> when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces you picked up? And they said to him, 12. When I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of broken pieces did you pick up? And they said to him, seven. And he was saying to them, do you not yet understand? And they came to Bethsaida and they brought a blind man to Jesus and implored him to touch him. Taking the blind man by the hand, he brought him out of the village and after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men, for I see them like trees walking around. Then again, he laid his hands on his eyes and he looked intently and was restored and began to see everything clearly. And he sent him to his home saying, do not even enter the village. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joanne. Now I have a comment regarding mm -hmm. the, the man who was uh, Jesus healed his, his eyes, who said, when he asked him, do you see anything? And he said, I see men like trees walking around. Now in, in the Bible, symbolic of, of the word 
tree is man, is mankind, is people. People are symbolic of trees in life and in, in God's world. And so when he said, I see man, when, when the first thing the blind man said is, I see men looking like trees, he was he probably didn't know what we know about that now. And but that was the point there that men are like trees in God's eyes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And supporting uh, scripture for what was just read, Matthew 15, verse 32. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel compassion for the people because they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, for they might faint on the way. Okay, uh, 2 Kings uh, 4, verses 42 through 44. Now a man came from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. And he said, give them to the people that they may eat. His attendant said, what? Will I set this before a hundred men? But he said, give them to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. Amen. Amen. So he said it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. Amen. And now we'll go to Peter's confession of Christ. Mr. Joanna. Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. Jesus went out along with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he questioned his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? They told him, saying, John the Baptist, and others say, Elijah, but others, one of the prophets. And he continued by questioning them, But who do you say that I am, Peter? Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ. And he warned them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he was stating the matter plainly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning around and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my works in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Amen. Amen. Uh, and now to put in scripture. We'll begin in John 6, and we'll read verse 68 through 69. Um, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And that is to say that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, um, we know, well, the, the, the uh, Jewish people know of that time, including people, Peter, they all knew that they were ex expecting a Messiah. That, that is the Holy One of God referred to by Peter. Now, in the Old Testament, when, when the, uh, the Messiah was first mentioned, it was called uh, the Shiloh, it was called Shiloh. 
Now, let's, you'll see that here in this, this text here, uh, Genesis 46, verse 10. 49. Oh, I'm sorry, 49, verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Now, the Messiah here was referred to as Shiloh. To, and and this, on, in this account here, uh, Jacob was uh, blessing his sons with, with uh, precepts of what they would be in, in the world, what, what their lives would, would uh, amount to in the world. Um, move on, please. Oh, and we go to the transfiguration, Sister Joanna. Mark chapter 9, 1 through 13. And Jesus was saying to them, Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God after it has come with power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and brought them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his garments became radiant and exceedingly white, as no launderer on earth can whiten them. Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. <coughs> Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to answer. Can, with... I, can I make a comment here? Yes. Well, <clears throat> yes. And when Peter said, uh, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, he was not getting the full picture of what was going on here. This was an amazing transformation when Jesus was was went up there and they were on the holy mountain here and and he was treating Moshe and Elijah like real men who needed a tabernacle to sleep in at night or to get out of the weather but but these were people that God put before them in 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 a vision these were miraculous uh circumstances here and and that were being projected for their because they were God's disciples. They were Jesus' disciples. And he wanted them to get a full picture of, of everything that he was doing, he was doing in the world, so that they could represent Christ and, and the Lord as well. I have a, a comment, and mm -hmm. correct me if it's not, but it seems here also that Peter was was making Moses and Elijah equal to Jesus. Yeah. But really Jesus um you know he he is the Lord God, you know, right. he is and he 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 so they really didn't um, didn't get it at all. Peter he thought, wow, Elijah, Moses, and Jesus, wow, I'm gonna have three tabernacles and we'll keep them all up here. And you know, yeah. it's like um you know, there are no way was Moses and Elijah equal to Jesus. Yeah. No, nothing, nobody is equal to yeah. Jesus. They were saying, we're going to create a little camp for you guys to camp <laughs> out in. Yeah. <laughs> <This mountain. laughs> so okay. go, go ahead, Sister John. And, and, and then verse six is, for he did not know what to answer, for they became terrified. Yes. Then a cloud formed overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listen to okay, him. this sets Jesus apart from Elijah and Moses. The God of heaven, um, Yahweh, Jehovah, is saying, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. You know, maybe he it's, it sounds like this is like maybe he's like, warning them or maybe a little frustrated that they're that they're not getting it <laughs> mm -hmm. all at once they looked around and saw no one with them anymore except jesus alone amen 
As they were coming down from the mountain, he gave them orders not to relate to anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man rose from the dead. They seized upon that statement, discussing with one another what rising from the dead meant. They asked him, saying, Why is it that the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he said to them, Elijah does come first and restore all things. And yet how is it written of the Son of Man that he will suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I say to you that Elijah has indeed come, and they did to him whatever they wished, just as it is written of him. Amen. Amen. And now support in Scripture. We begin with Daniel uh, 7, verse 9. I kept looking until thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His vesture was like white snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames. Its wheels were a burning fire. Amen. Second Peter 1, verse 17. For when we, he received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Amen. Isaiah 66, verse 24. Then they will go forth and look on the corpse of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm will not die, and their fire will not be quenched, and they will be an abhorrence to all mankind. Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6. Behold, I am going to send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers so that I will not come and smite the land with a curse. Amen. Amen. Now all things possible. Sister Joanna. Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 29. When they came back to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. Immediately, when the entire crowd saw him, they were amazed and began running up to greet him. And he asked them, what are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought you my son, possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens out. I told your disciples to cast it out, and they could not do it. And he answered them and said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. They brought the boy to him. When he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion, and falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. It has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, <laughs> all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. After crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out. And the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him, and he got up. When he came into the house, 
his disciples began questioning him privately, why could we not drive it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. Amen. And now we go to support in scripture for what was just read. Matthew 17, verse 20. And he said to them, because of the light, the littleness of your faith, but truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. It's all about faith, brothers and sisters. It's all about faith. Matthew 17, verse 21. But this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. Daniel 9, verse 3. So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Amen. And so that last jet person there, he was really, he wasn't taking no chance. He was praying and he was in sackcloth and ashes and, and that he really wanted to humble himself before the Lord. He gave himself to the Lord and said, Lord, take care of me. I can't do anything. Help me to do this. Amen. Help me. Okay. Death <laughs> and resurrection foretold. <laughs> plus dire warnings. This is Joanna. Mark 9, verses 30 to 50. From there they went out and began to go through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know about it. For he was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he has been killed, he will rise three days later. But they did not understand this statement, and they were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he began to question them, what were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had discussed with one another which one of them was the greatest. Mm -hmm. Sitting down, he called the twelve and said to them, if anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Taking a child, he set him before them and taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one child like this in my name receives me and whoever receives me does not receive me, but him who sent me. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not hinder him, for there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name and be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is for us. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because of your name as followers of Christ, truly I say to you, he will not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe to stumble, it would be better for him if with a heavy millstone hung around his neck, he had been cast into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than having your two hands to go into hell into the unquenchable fire where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than having your two feet to be cast into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your eye causes you to stumble, throw it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell. Where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, for everyone will be salted with fire. 
this to me is really interesting. These are some hard verses. And he repeats this statement three times. So there's really something important here. He wants all of us to get. And uh, then verse 49, he says, for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt becomes unsalty, with what will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Amen. Amen. And now, support in scripture. We'll begin with Isaiah 66, verse 24. We'll read. Excuse me. <clears throat> then they will go forth and look on the courts of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm will not die, and their fire will not be quenched, and they will be an abhorrence to all mankind. Abhorrence. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. I have a comment. You know, um, we are to be the salt of the earth. And this verse is showing us a way to, to, to be that, to, to not just obey this commandment, but all of the commandments. And, and in that way, we can be the salt of the earth by honoring our mother and father and our days will be prolonged in the land which the Lord gives you. But then also you could look at every single commandment. And if mm -hmm. we read the commandments in spirit and truth, it will make us the salt of the earth because people yes. will see our faith and people will see Christ in us. Right. And that brings us to the conclusion. And we'll begin with Peter's confession of Christ. Um. Mark 8, verses 27 through 30. On the way to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus questioned his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? They told him, saying, John the Baptist, and others say, Elijah, but others, one of the prophets. And he continued by questioning them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. And he warned them to tell no one about him. The Transfiguration. Uh, Mark 9, 2 through 8. And, and brothers and sisters, this is, the conclusion is basically a, a review of what we've just read. And I'll, I take three passages which I think represents some of the important features of the message. And I offer them as a, the conclusion. And this is the second feature here. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and brought them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his garments became radiant and exceedingly white as no launderer on earth can whiten them. Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, let us make three tabernacles, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to answer for them, for they became terrified. Now, we talked about this earlier, uh, and, and, of course, Peter was out of his league here. He, he, he saw, uh, of course, Joanna mentioned Jesus as being equal with uh, Elijah and Moses. And, and he also thought that it was of some value to them to have tabernacles, that they may be, uh, you know, spend a night there. And, and, and so... He just didn't, he wasn't really seeing Jesus as the savior of the world and, and the man who would raise 
be raised from the dead, even though he had mentioned all and said all these things. He was thinking back about what Moses had done, what Elijah had done, and, and these were great things. But uh, he was beyond that. Jesus and himself, even Peter himself, was beyond all these things. Okay, and moving on. Uh, then a cloud formed, overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud. Now, here's what, this is their correcting force here. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Amen. All at once they looked around and saw no one with them anymore except Jesus alone. And so Amen. the Lord just got rid of everyone else that was there in that picture. When it talks about Jesus becoming radiant and uh, his garments were white like no other white in the world it's like he was glorified mm -hmm. he, you saw the glorified christ there and um you know putting him certainly above elijah and, and moses amen he who wants to be first mark 9 verses 35 through 37 Sitting down, he called the twelve and said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Taking a child, he set him before them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one child like this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me does not receive me, but him who sent me. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this word that you've given to us today, that you've presented for us delivery to those who are here, listening today, Lord. And and, and we, we thank you. We thank you for just blessing this day and, and your Sabbath day and and uh, <clears throat> blessing us with, with the uh, privilege of delivering this word. And we, we just thank you for all the things that you're doing in our lives. We pray that you, you, you'll continue to be with us, those in this room and those who are hearing this message, no matter where they are. And Lord, it just, uh, we give you all the honor, all the praises and all the glory in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord, if it's, Make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance before you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.